so incredible. Blueberries. They're finally ready. Trick with blueberries. In my last video, how I feed them and everything, the trick to beat the animals, plant them close to your home, and then I harvest both morning and night and afternoon if they look ready, which there's probably a whole pint behind you guys that are ready. Here are the trees I planted in our last video. I'm gonna put this one in a little more shade. gonna go through a little trauma but we want to cool it off too. We still haven't built the trellises that's next on the list but you know until things are climbing it's not super priority but look at they're starting to trail. We're there. Another couple of days this will definitely need a trellis to climb on. I have no idea what that is. Some sort of melon or pumpkin or fun thing. Peppers. Amazing. Oh, this one looks hot. This is normal. As long as it has water, which it does. I filled the tanks. Sometimes I fill my tanks and I don't add nutrients because I'm just lazy at the moment. So I just leave the lids off if I do that. So I need to add nutrients tonight after the gym. But this is a cool weather crop. It's a Romanesca broccoli and they don't like to get overheated. So things will get wilty and then they'll perk back up as soon as the sun goes down. This Emaco cabbage, it's a Napa cabbage. These are ready to be harvested, or at least this one is. So that's on the menu this week. What I'm looking for right now is we're going to make some lion's mane vegan crab cakes. So uncrab cakes with the lion's mane that we harvested. And I need green onions, Red pepper. Do I want to do celery? I might put some celery in there. I don't know. Is that weird? And then we're going to harvest some salad. There's some lettuce that's trying to bolt on me. For our salad, we also have all these tomatoes that we need to harvest. And the stinging nettle is pumping. I'll make a pesto with that this week. It's actually about to flower which means more stinging nettle, never ends, love it. And we're going to harvest these lettuce that are starting to flower, that when they start to make that cone shape, that's your cue. And what else? Peas. This is the Patio Pride. It's my favorite pea so far to ever grow in the towers. They're doing incredible. I did two to three seeds per rock wool. And the two to three seeds per rock will worked out really great. I just planted 12 more of these trays. I can grow in the summer. I can grow a little out of season in our area because we're cooler here, but they just did so amazing. So I'm going to put 12 of them towards the bottom of a tower where it's a little bit shadier and continue to grow them. And then I also purchased them from True Leaf and I purchased them by the ounce, which saves a ton of money because you can go through peas pretty quickly because it's such a fast season crop. So that's my little hack there. All right, lots of starts. You guys see that stuff all the time. Mushrooms are harvested. I am, I'll show you guys how to do a second bloom on these another day, but I'm keeping them moist in there. And then we're gonna harvest these red peppers. Oh, whoa, how oh, gorgeous. Small, these are the first ones to come up on this plant when it was still teeny tiny, but they're so beautiful. That one's a little bigger. And I think that'll be enough. The other one's not quite red enough. Look at the chili peppers. These can get two feet long. I'm curious if they'll get that long indoors. That one's at least eight inches long. Oh man, it is summer. It's our first really warm day, but I see like arugula wanting to bolt. Things, it's time to turn over most of this cool weather stuff. I don't know if this is ever gonna do anything. I'm probably just gonna take these out and eat them. It was a cabbage I was experimenting with. Not wasted, I've been eating the leaves all the time and juicing them, I really like them, but I don't know. I think this stuff, it's time. 
Now this will perk back up. It's just hot, but the more that that happens, um, just the more it wears on your food. So I probably need to get this tower clean and put it back in the garage and grow some lettuce. I am gonna get celery. I don't know, crab cake, celery, seems like it goes together. Yeah. You could be more gentle than me, but it works. So bright out here, I was recording my face and so couldn't even tell. All right, we're gonna take these green onions. Look at that root bed. So I'm gonna cut these, keep the roots and I want to replant these, but I want to replant them in my garden. They just grow in my garden, so to use a grow port, it feels wasteful. All right, we got that. It smells so incredible in here. I have a loaf of bread going. All right, we're gonna cut those. I'm gonna peel off this, no, I might not, yeah. If I can, I'm gonna peel off, no, that won't work. But I will break off that net pot and we are gonna grow this outside and let it continue to grow. Oh, it smells so good. This onion is kind of a rare one, I'll put the name here. And I really like it. It's kind of like a leek, but you don't have to wait 5,000 years for it to be ready like you do a leek. The bread's done. So this is my Zojirusi. I bought it used on eBay 10 years ago and it works great. This one doesn't look quite as dark on the top. Did I put it on light? I put it on medium. Normally it's a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna leave it in here because it's warm and it'll continue to brown it up a little bit. But this recipe is just my tried and true bread recipe. So I will post that in the description below if you want to have that recipe. It's been the same one I've been using for 10 years on this same machine that I bought used on eBay. So love this. All right, so I have lion's mane, grew this in my indoor tower. I also have some golden oyster and these were at their peak and they were so amazing. And I did something really stupid and cranked up the humidity. So they got a little bit soggy, but they're still fine. So they just changed the color a little bit and they're definitely wet. We're gonna use all of these. I was gonna use the oysters for something different because they were super crisp and crunchy, but now they're kind of soggy. So what we're gonna do, chop all this up really small and lion's mane has a very seafoody texture and I would even say smell to it. It's a little bit, I don't know, do people call that umami? I don't know. It is very seafoody. So that's why we make crab cakes with them. I also like to add hearts of palm and artichoke hearts. I feel like just the crab is a little bit too much, especially for children. I mean, just the, not crab, see, it's crab. Just the uh, mushrooms can make them a little bit too much for children. So adding the hearts of palm and the artichokes, mild it out, but keep that consistency of a crab cake. I made the bread because we need breadcrumbs for this and it's a pretty simple recipe. So let's just chop these up. Oh my gosh, these are so incredible.
Okay, I'm gonna use a vegan butter. Probably not the healthiest choice, but I really want this to have lots and lots of flavor. A little bit of a decadent treat. Put some garlic. Garlic press is for medicinal uses uh, to pull out that special stuff in garlic. So you need to like mash your garlic to get out of it. I'll put a link below to it. It's great. You don't have to peel anything. Now, sometimes it doesn't come out perfectly. But then to pop the inside, you just do that. And it actually does not work well with peeled garlic. You need the skin on. Smells amazing. In the background with that butter and garlic. Woo. All right, the mushrooms are tasting really good so i'm just making this up i cut the green onions but i may just save them for the salad and do greens just the greens i don't know if i'm going to do the celery because there were no recipes that said celery um, i'm using a vegan mayonnaise try again not the healthiest but I don't feel like, normally I make just a homemade mayonnaise with the eggs. Farm fresh eggs, but I don't feel like doing that. All right, let's try that. A little spicy brown mustard. That was maybe a teaspoon. Vegan Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever you call this stuff. pepper up. Ooh, ooh, that is good. All right, so I'm letting the mushrooms brown a little bit. And let's decide what we're going to do here. Hearts of palm. It's one of my favorite foods. Get these at Costco. And I normally do the jarred artichoke hearts too. These are just part of our emergency food supply. But I haven't been to Costco in forever and it's the only place you can find them. Sometimes Sam's has them, but not all the time. All right, so we're gonna dice these up. Again, this is protein. These are actually really balanced macros. Not that, you know, that's it's like a gym top thing. But I like that they're low fat, high protein, decent amount of carb ratio. And it's the texture. It's gonna add that meaty, crabby uh, texture to these and just kind of stretch our mushrooms a little bit further. So we can put some of these up for future eating. I'm hoping to be able to freeze some of them. I don't know if I'm going to use the artichoke hearts. I'm going to kind of see what happens when we put this together. Here's what our crab is looking like. Our mushrooms. I wanted them to brown a little bit. Get a little bit crispy. And dry out some. And I think we're there. I'm going to taste. Oh my gosh. So good. It's just amazing how much the texture is like crab. I'm gonna let them dry out just a little bit longer. If they're too moist, they can be a little bit chewy. And crab is not chewy. 
much. So we're just gonna crank these up a little bit and just let them dry out. All right, I was gonna make homemade breadcrumbs, but I don't have time before the gym. We're gonna start mixing all this and just see what we decide. I'm not using egg to make these sticks. I'm gonna use this egg replacer, which is basically just like flax seed, just to bind them. Ooh, we're burning. Those are so good. All right, let's put the red pepper in. Take it out because it doesn't somewhere. 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. That is so good. Wow. Okay. Okay, the flavor, oh my gosh. These are so incredible. I don't know. I mean, they are incredible. I really know. I'm just gonna do a little oil and brown these. that green onion and it's kind of poking out of everything but I would say the only thing is they're not super sticking together is that a word no idea what I'm doing by the way like I don't think I've ever made a crab cake have I ever made a crab cake I mean I don't eat crab there was a time when I would make things like that so my husband when he did eat more meat i don't remember if it did i would have been like 25. i probably went a little heavy on the green onion because they're not wanting to stay in the crab cake but can you really go too heavy on green onion What I did to make this recipe, which isn't really a recipe, is just kind of read other people's recipes. I read some vegan recipes and some traditional crab cake and kind of blended the two. Like the traditional crab cake wanted that Old Bay seasoning, which I just don't know if I trust those. Couldn't find a clean one at the grocery store. So I just did the horse Worcestershire and the mustard, that's what the vegan recipes were calling for. The vegan recipes were using not mushrooms, but artichoke hearts and hearts of palm. So I did the, artich the hearts of palm. And then there were some lion mane specific recipes, but they were just all mushroom and then more of the things you put in a real crab cake, like the Old Bay and real mayonnaise and things like that. So this is sort of a hybrid. Mm, so good. All right, I have to film wonky in here because of this view. Let me show you the final result. There's definitely things I need to work on for the next time, but I am growing lion's mane indefinitely. This is like a regular thing on our menu. Lion's mane has amazing immune boosting benefits. There's tons of health benefits. It's also great to calm the nervous system. And I'm just super excited to make it a regular part of our diet. Now I am just learning how to use it. What does it taste like? What are the different ways we can use it? Crab cakes for sure are on the menu in the future. Let me show you how I'm serving these and the things I need to change. And once I master this recipe, I'll put it on my very neglected blog, but it will be 
of the things I would change, everything a lot smaller. Definitely the veggies need to be smaller. They are really what are causing it to fall apart. So I'm gonna do that next time. Chop up the vegetables extra small, but the flavor is absolutely incredible. So the ingredients are perfect. So I broiled some tortillas. These are just organic tortillas from Azure. And I was remembering when we were in Florida, my brother ordered crab cakes at a restaurant we went to, and this is how they served it. So theirs weren't actually stuck together either. Like at a real restaurant, their crab was like a pile and you used a cracker to dip in it. Put the crackers. Could have cooked these a little bit longer too. See, it's holding together pretty well. I mean, you couldn't like pick this up and eat it, but I don't think you're supposed to do that anyway. We're gonna put that here. I wish I would have saved some green onion. I would have topped that with green onion. And then I made a vegan Olay sauce. So this is Veginase garlic, using my medicinal garlic mincer, and lemon. And we'll just put a dollop of that right on the top. I'm gonna steal green onions from over here that fell off. Okay, there we go. Lion's Mane Vegan Crab Cakes. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, the red pepper. Ooh, it's my favorite. Mmm. The flavors. So many flavors. Cheers.